All right, guys, welcome back. Week five. Give you a little update here. Still in the sling. I'm at 20 degrees extension. Feeling great. Almost have this thing on just as a like insurance policy now. Don't feel like I need to protect myself from overextension. Um, I've been doing some more research online and some people don't even get put into this thing after their surgery, which also makes me feel like it's a little bit redundant but we're doing it just keeping safe i see my orthopedic surgeon next week and i'm sure that i'll be out of it and everything will be a-okay from there in my first video i discussed areas that we can either incorporate or help optimize in order to heal this tendon as fast and as efficiently as possible and one of those modalities that i spoke of was contrast therapy and today i want to talk about why i was so excited to be able to jump back into that what health benefits I think it brings for people like us healing from a surgery or from a tendon rupture, and also some of the complications that come along with it. So just an update, this week has been very good. Week five, I think, is when you start feeling you can take on the world again. You don't have any more limitation when it comes to normal day use of the arm. And you have to keep reminding yourself that, hey, you are still healing. So like, calm down. Baby, calm down, calm down at least for my sake. Don't use the arm, even though you can opt out and use your left. And so examples of this are carrying my gym bag, carrying plates of food, drinking my cup of coffee, brushing my teeth, all these things that I would normally do with my right side. I'm still cognizant of the fact that it's healing. And so I opt out and use my left when I can up until your orthopedic surgeon gives you the green light and hopefully get out of this cyborg looking thing. <laughs> that I have been in for the past three weeks. My range of motion is better. I believe that it started getting better the day I went in and I saw my physiotherapist, I saw my registered massage therapist, and I saw my kinesiologist. So I'm lucky and I have a friend that works in a clinic able to bring me in for an initial assessment as well as a checkup to see how this is healing. And all three were very cautious when dealing with the injury site. And so we basically did some minimal scar management. They did some flossing in and around the area. They broke up adhesions that were found under the skin post-surgery as well as breaking up the different tracks and the fascia that heal differently than they should be. So fascia usually runs parallel to the longitudinal length of the muscle. After a surgery, when the site tries to heal on top of each other, these fascias might come in all disorganized. And so your job or your physical therapist or your RMT or your kinesiologist's job is to help break those up and help realign them so that those adhesions don't limit your range of motion, your movement, or anything else in that nature. We also did some work on the opposite side of the body, so my left side. You can imagine that this side has been isolated for a long period of time and that this side has been basically overused, that it's also going to have some some knots, some, some sticky areas. And so we worked on my pec, we worked on my shoulders, obviously my traps on both sides. And immediately after my appointments, I went into the spa where i use the sauna and the cold plunge it happened to be in the same area which i was lucky i did about an hour and a half of contrast therapy immediately after my rmt physio and kinese and so i feel like those two in conjunction is going to be something that i continue to do for the weeks following because after all that therapy in that site is completed the contrast therapy will help flush out the the metabolites that were broken down and help bring in fresh nutrients and building blocks that are needed in order to realign or build up what was broken down during the appointments. So in my last video, I discussed the details of how exercise can help expedite the healing process with response to hormones, as well as that scientific process called cross-education. Now today, for the remainder of the video, I want to discuss why I believe contrast therapy is equally important when it comes to the healing process of a tendon, as well as the speed in which it heals and how fast we can get back to normality. Now, there's two different ideologies with contrast therapy, and I'll let you decide at the end of this video what you feel like you belong to more. There are some notable names, Dr. Andrew Huberman, Joe Rogan. You see in these human studies up to 16-fold increases in growth hormone. So you could imagine this could exert some very strong reparative effect if you're training for a big event or endurance event. That say 
that contrast therapy is beneficial in all ways when it comes to longevity, hormone regulation, mood, overall health with respect to heat shock proteins and how they can help get rid of dysregulated proteins in the body. And there's another camp that believes all the scientific studies with respect to contrast therapy are biased. And amongst these scientists are famous doctors such as Dr. Peter Atiyah, who is my personal favorite when it comes to longevity in medicine, modern day medicine. And so their viewpoint is that the studies that follow along people who undergo contrast therapy are biased in the fact that these people who are willing to sit in a sauna for 20 minutes and jump into an ice bath are biased due to the fact that these are the people who have everything else in their life optimized for health and nutrition. People who can afford to sauna are by definition going to have more time on their hands, more disposable income, probably more education. On top of that, if you're going to choose to sauna because you believe it's healthy, what else are you doing because you believe it is healthy? I mean, most of the people doing this are the people who exercise regularly, have their diet in check, who are very health conscious, who want to optimize longevity and hormones. And so the studies are a little skewed with respect to that. But at the end of the day, none of the scientific papers or research is true and that is biased. The fact that you feel better walking out of these things, that I always feel less stressed, that my mood is increased, I have more energy for the rest of the day. I don't need a scientific paper or study to tell me how I feel at a couple rounds of contrast therapy. And for that reason alone, I will continue doing this, even though that the benefits are somewhat in a gray area. That being said, these benefits or these hormetic effects that are shown in these papers are as follows. So an increase in catecholamines, which is your dopamine, your adrenaline, your noradrenaline, the increased relaxation that you feel post contrast therapy. And I know that sounds like a huge paradox. Believe me, don't knock it till you try it. You do feel amazing after this. It helps with the transition of white fat to brown fat. This in summary will help increase your metabolism. It also helps the recovery process after workouts. And lastly, which is the most important for me in this stage, is increased growth hormone. So the theme of my videos up until now is increasing our growth hormone because that is what is going to help with the healing process of the tendon. And some papers have shown that by using contrast therapy, there are upwards of 16 times increase in your baseline growth hormone secretion, which is huge. And the protocols I use for my sessions are as follows. I do 15 minutes in the sauna followed by three minutes in the cold plunge and then sum it all up to sitting down for about 10 minutes in room temperature allowing the body to re-acclimatize to its baseline temperature now this 10 minute period is where benefits are shown to be gained the most it's tempting to jump into like a jacuzzi or a hot tub immediately after the cold plunge but you want your body to come back to baseline on its own and in this period, you might be shivering, you might be shaking, and that's all fine. Just know that that's part of the hormetic stress that your body needs in order to gain the, the benefits of the contrast therapy. And another reason why, and this could just be anecdotal, is that I feel that I reach deeper levels of sleep the days I use the sauna. So I said earlier, I use the sauna three to four times a week. And the days that I do use them, as opposed to the days that I don't, I can physically track with my watch. I sleep with my watch at night and it follows my sleep that I have longer periods of deep sleep those nights than the nights where I do not undergo contrast therapy. Our deep sleep is the stage where our body recovers from our daily activities. And so for me, the more I get, the better. I spoke of all the benefits to contrast therapy earlier, but I would be remiss to not mention any of the risks. And so some of the risks that can accompany contrast therapy, and this obviously will, will be different amongst every individual depending on your current condition. But if you are one to have a current heart condition, due to the nature of the constriction of blood vessels jumping from hot to cold, it can lead to a transient increase in your blood pressure or your heart rate, which could lead to a heart attack or a stroke. And so 
before jumping into any of this, it would probably be wise to talk to your healthcare professional. Another risk to contrast therapy, that it blunts your hypertrophic response to the workout. So if you do this immediately after weightlifting, which is what I do, studies and papers have shown that because of the cold nature of the water, blunting the inflammation process of the body, that could also lead to inhibiting the body's response to the workout, which is needed in order to grow the muscles. So the hypertrophic response of the workout. You have to pick and choose what benefits you more. For me, the fact that that I will feel better and be able to hit a workout the following day, plus all the, the benefits that I discussed earlier, the growth hormone, the catecholamines, the increased relaxation. All of those outweigh the fact that I might not be getting as big as I can with each of my workouts. Those are the benefits to contrast therapy and the reason why I continue to do them three to four times a week and why I believe if you want to give yourself the best chance at healing a distal bicep tendon rupture or any tendon rupture for that matter, or you should think of incorporating contrast therapy to your recovery and rehab routine. I right, guess. See you on the next one.